Hey team, Dr. Jack Gordy here, and today I'm going to be introducing the TH17 cell. Now the important thing to mention during all these videos is that I am massively summarizing what's going on here, but it's important just to give you those landmarks from which you could flesh out details what, if you wanted to go into that research or into the immunology field. So let's introduce the TH17 cell. This image here again is an immunohistochemistry image, which is really, really beautiful. Um, and what we've got here in the green is uh, T cells, so that's uh, CD4, so that uh, is all T helper cells are now being labeled by that CD4 antibody there. In the red, we have IL-17, which is a cytokine, um, which is what the, the cytokine gives the name to the TH17 cell. And um, up here, we actually have uh, a cancer tissue in which inflammatory an inflammatory cytokine had been genetically deleted from this mouse. And down here, the inflammatory cytokine is still there. So here we can see that where there is inflammation, there is more red. And remember, red labels the IL-17, which labels the TA-17s. So in the mouse in which it had a functioning inflammatory cytokine system, we've got more TA-17 cells. And in the mouse that has uh, that doesn't have a functioning inflammatory cytokine system, there are fewer TH17 cells. So that gives you a hint on where we're going to go with the TH17 cells, but mostly it's just there to look pretty as an introductory slide. Right, now let's jump into it. Oh, let me flick over to laser pointer here. Ooh, there we go, laser pointer. Okay, so we have the T cell, which uh, divides into the two major groups, CD4 positive and CD8 positive cells, which are the helper cells and the cytotoxic T cells. They can then divide down into memory cells and effector cells once they're activated. Um, and the TH uh, effector cell can then turn into several subtypes. Now we've done TH1, the uh, inflammatory cytotoxic uh, form. We've done TH2, which is the antiparasite, but also the allergy form and also the B cell proliferation form. And now we're moving on to the TH17, this guy down here. Um, so we need an activation of a T helper cell to get a TH17 subtype. What do TH17 cells do? Well, remember, all helper T cells, they take in the si signaling information of antigens and cytokines, and based on an antigen presentation, as well as the concentration of various cytokines in the milieu, uh, they then turn into a particular kind of T cell, and then they release uh, cytokines in response to that. That's why they're called helper cells, because they help the immune response, but they don't do a lot directly. Um, and that's a bit harsh, but think about the cytotoxic T cell is popping cells that contain um, uh, is popping cells that contain viruses. The B cells producing antibodies which fight uh, the pathogen, and the innate immune system is phagocytosing and producing uh, uh, bacterial killing compounds and um, uh, pathogen-cidal compounds um, like bleach and all that kind of stuff. So the rest of the immune cells seem to be doing something. The T helper cell just sits back and releases cytokines in order to, and other signaling molecules in order to direct the immune response. And so the TH17 cell is no different, um, and it releases IL-17. Now that's an, uh, an inflammatory cytokine that gives the name to the T cell. And this um, IL-17, indirectly, not directly, but indirectly, promotes neutrophil recruitment and activation. That's the big thing that IL, uh, that a T helper cell, 17 cell does. Now, what's super interesting about that is that we think, when we think about the innate immune system, the non-specific inflammatory immune system, we think neutrophils, macrophages, right? Monocytes, right? Those guys. When we think about the adaptive immune system, we think about B cells, T cells, right? But here we have a T cell that's orchestrating a innate immune response. So this T cell is actually, it's part of the adaptive immune system because it has a, a T cell receptor, so therefore it's responding to specific antigens. Um, and so it's learning. Remember, that's the key thing from the adaptive immune system is that um, it, we can create memory cells. Um, and so we can remember and adapt specifically to pathogens, whereas the innate immune cell system is not specific. Well, this uh, TH17 is specific because it's responding to an antigen, 
Um, and so it's a, re a specific adaptive response, but it coordinates the innate immune system, which is really, really interesting. And that's why um, when I first introduced the immune system, I said we, we like to divide it into the adaptive and the innate immune system, but there's so much crosstalk and overlap between those two systems. Um, but it's just a good way to think about it. So this T helper cell is unique because it coordinates an innate immune response using the cytokine IL-17. It does influence um, some of the adaptive immune cells, but its major thing is this inflammatory response that it induces. Um, so here, here we've seen this before, but this is various aspects of the immune system from the antibody effects there, the cytotoxic T cell and the natural killer cell effects, the phagocytosis, here's the neutrophil degranulation in the vascular, and here's how each of them kind of perform um, to each of the diseases, viruses, bacteria, cancer, parasite. What we're looking at down here is the TH17 response induces the neutrophil degranulation and netosis response. And so what, what we're looking here is back, bacteria, and I should also say fungi, um, are really important here, sort of those um, microscopic uh, organisms as opposed to the virus, which we might not define as a living organism. Um, but also pretty good against parasites as well. So um, the TA17 response here, it's most famous for bacteria and fungi, but it is pretty good um, at a lot of these responses here by inducing an inflammatory response. But actually the kind of pathogen isn't the main thing here. The kind of pathogen isn't the main thing here. The main thing is pathogen dose, right? So if we have a really high pathogen dose, right? Um, so you've just taken in a huge amount of pathogen. Um, say someone, you know, you've eaten raw chicken, right? Say you've eaten raw chicken, you take in a huge amount of pathogen, you're overloaded with salmonella, for example, right? Um, it takes, you know, a week or so to mount your adaptive immune response. You need uh, phagocytes to, to phagocytose, antigen present, the lymph node, try find a B cell, try find a T cell, get them to talk to each other, then you get amplification of those cells, then you get the production of antibodies, right? So it takes a, a while, if it's the first time you've been exposed to a pathogen, to mount an adaptive immune response to it. If you have a huge dose, you're gonna die before you can mount that response, right? Um, if you just have a huge dose of bacteria, um, just relying on the adaptive immune system to take a week and a bit to, to generate that response, you'll die by, that, by the time that happens, right? So what you need to do is do your non-specific, your neutrophilic response as fast as you can. And that's where uh, the TH17 comes into it. If the dose is too much, um, you're going to initiate a TH17 response because you've got a, a too large a dose to be dealt with by the antibody responses of the B cells. Right, so that's uh, just a quick introduction. Um, in the next video, we're going to go over how to induce a TH17 response.